Welcome to church this morning. Uh, we're going to start by singing Hallelujah to the King of Kings. So let's stand. Maker of the heavens and earth, exalted by the roar of the multitude. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. The cry of hallelujah resounds. The fullness of time shows his victory. Justice and truth are revealed. His wisdom adored. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah, the Almighty. Let us all rejoice and give him all our praise, our praise. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah to the God of power. The people of the Lord are ready to see their King, Jesus, Jesus. servants of God, all who fear him come whether small or great, fall before his throne in all and worship him. Blessed are those who will feast at the glorious banquet of God himself. The wedding of the Lamb has come, his bride is now in. King of kings, hallelujah, the almighty reigns, let us all rejoice and give him all our praise, our praise, hallelujah to the Lord of lords, hallelujah to the God of power, the people of the Lord are ready to see their King, Jesus. Father God, we praise you, our creator, and thank you for our King Jesus, whom we worship. God, thank you for gathering us this morning to hear your word and praise our Lord and Saviour Jesus. We pray you would deepen our knowledge and understanding of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Well, welcome to church here at Emu Plains Anglican. It's great to see you. My name's Peter. Thank you for making it out in this wild weather. Welcome to those on the live stream. It's great to have you joining us as well. And a really warm welcome to those who are new or visiting today. Uh, for those who are new, we'd love to know more about you. And we have connect cards uh, available just on the silver box as you walked in. It's really exciting to be leading the service today for the very first time. <laughs> and it's really wonderful being united here as God's family. As we gather, it's good to remember why we're here. We're here because of the good news we have heard, that Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth, lived a perfect life, died on the cross for our sin and was buried. But he rose again from the dead and appeared to many, proclaiming the forgiveness of sin and peace with God for all who believe it. It is because of this good news that we're here today. Today we'll be hearing from God's word. We'll read about Noah from Genesis. We'll be thinking through God's judgment and his grace. Next, we're going to be hearing from Chris and the music team for Together Time. So welcome again, music team. Thanks, Chris. Well, good morning. Uh, I'm going to do a, a promo now. We're doing a promo. Soon we're coming up to uh, 
next time we're going to go from today I can get my mouth working we're going back into Genesis but coming soon on a church near you we're going to be going into Luke and so I thought we'd do a little teaser today of Luke and we're doing a great song by Colin Buchanan uh, which talks about when we're following God and following Christ sometimes we need to not do the things that we want to do but the things that God wants to do so we have to deny ourselves we have to say no to the things that we want to do but do the things that God wants us to do instead so we're going to do Luke chapter 9 verse 23 so join in with us and you can do actions as well so stand up and move about if you want all right great promo for next term. Well, I'm going to pray for us now in preparation for hearing God's word. Faithful God, you caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Enable us to read, note, learn, and inwardly digest them so that we may be encouraged and supported by your word and that we may embrace and always hold firmly on to the joyful hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's time for the children to go to Holiday Kids Church. Today, children from ages three through to year five will be all together over in the Sandstone building. So children, if you'd like to make your way out, Alison will be leading you guys today. And we're going to have a two-minute break while uh, the children make their way out. Thank you. 
Well, hello everyone. Uh, good morning from me. My name's Dave. Uh, great to be here with you. Uh, if I can just have your attention again, you can continue those conversations over morning tea, which will be inside today, by the way. I'm sure you guessed. Uh, we'll do that inside. Uh, we're going to do our Transforming Life spot now. I'm up here with Peter. Uh, how good is it to have Peter leading the service, by the way? Thank you. I, just, I love it. I love it. And not just because I don't have to do it, uh, but because I love... I love seeing people up here serving, uh, and that is actually the topic of today's Transforming Lives spot. We're talking about uh, serving, thinking about that. So we thought we'd have a talk to Peter about how serving has looked over the course of her life at church here at Emu Plains Anglican. So thanks, Peter. You're welcome. It's great to be up here. Now, for those who don't uh, know you, because your name is Peter, but who's in your family? Uh, yes, I am married to Sam, who you might see sometimes up on uh, singing and keyboard. And I have Jude, Lior, and Adelaide. Excellent. Beautiful family. Now, how long have you been coming to Emmy Plains Anglican Church? Yeah, about 12, 13 years. Yeah. Really? really? Yes. Okay. And it was my first church. Is that right? That's, yeah. that's so cool. So this is your yeah first church. You've grown up here as a Christian. That's excellent. Uh, you've also grown up in serving as you've been here. But just tell us, take us back to years ago, and what was the kind of the first way you got involved with serving? Yeah. So the first way I got involved was in serving was on morning tea, and I learnt the ropes from Madge. She was very good at telling me yeah. the amount of coffee to make it nice and strong. Nice. The way I like it. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah, so I'd probably been here about nine-ish months. You've been here nine months? Yeah, and then about you started nine months morning at church tea. and started morning tea. Yep. That was a great start. Yeah. That's a, that's a good start for people. We love to get people started in, in those kind of ways. And, and then that wasn't, I guess, the, the last thing you did. What were some other no. ways you served over the years? Yeah, so over the years I served in kids' church, uh, and then the creche, in leading Bible study, in reading up the front, um, praying up the front, and also in some kind of non-Sunday or um, non-midweek ways as well with things like um, following up people during the week, mm. cooking meals for those in need, uh, things like that. Yeah, and that's across the space of you know, 13 years, not all at the same time, but just different ways you've served. This, this is not a question we spoke about, but like, how did you get into those? Was it that you, you put your hand up and said, I want to do that, or did someone ask you? How did you get into most of those things? No, unfortunately, I'm not the kind of person to put my hand up for things. Um, so usually somebody asked me, and it was always in a very kind and loving way um, if I would consider and think about um, those things and pray about them, so... Yeah. That's usually how yep. I That's came good. into those. Like the guy that asked you to service lead. Yeah, like yeah. that guy yeah, who he, very he yeah. was very kind and patient <laughs> uh, as well. Yeah, and of course it's not like, this is not like an easy, like super easy thing that you always do. It's more like uh, sometimes our serving, we step out of comfort zones to do things that are going to help others. And yeah. I guess the last question then is, Tell us why you serve, why you've served over the years, why you serve today. What's the reason? Yeah, so why I serve. So I think in the beginning it was probably uh, watching other people serve and showing kindness and love to me and wanting to give that back. And over the years as I've grown in my faith, the way I serve is really um, to serve Jesus. Mm. So to think about the way that he's served me in mm. taking the punishment for my sin, dying on the cross so that I could be forgiven. So my service is first for Jesus, but that also involves loving and serving others. That is excellent. Thank you so much, Peter. Uh, so, of course, you know, next steps for us as we think about this is uh, what are some ways you might like to serve? Um, think about that. I'm going to touch later on our serving booklet as kind of a next step when we do some notices. Uh, but that's good for now. Thanks so much, Peter. Great. What's next? Thanks, Dave. We are going to be hearing uh, from God's Word next. So if you have your Bible, it would be great to get it out ready. We're going to be um, having Margaret and Ingrid read for us, starting from Genesis chapter 6. Oh, got it. Good morning, everyone. It was my greatest fear that my little iPad wouldn't work, but it's all good. Um, so we're in Genesis chapter 6, 
and we're starting at verse 9, and then we're going to go through to uh, chapter 8 after that. So we're talking about Noah and the flood. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle and upper decks. I'm going to bring flood waters waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you and be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything as God commanded him. And then we're going to move on to um, 8, starting at verse 15, chapter 8, verse, verse 15. Then God said to Noah, come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds. Everything that moves on land came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground. Because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood, and never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Second Peter 3, starting at chapter 1 through to 13. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Saviour through your apostles. Above all, You must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as as it has since the beginning of, of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. 
But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Well, hello again, everybody. Uh, and I didn't say hi to the live streamers before. Uh, hello to you. Uh, good to have you with us as well. Might be a few more in a day like this. Uh, as, as we think about, you know, God in his providence has seen to it uh, that we come to Noah in the midst of a water bomb outside. Um, so thank you for that, Lord, uh, illustration. Um, but, yeah, Noah's Ark, we're talking about that today, of course, from Genesis, back in our Genesis series. Uh, Noah's Ark is really, it's one of those favourite kids' stories, isn't it, that we read in the kids' Bibles. We had the Fisher-Price Noah's Ark. Who had this toy? Anyone? Yeah, it's a, it's a popular one. Everyone's very happy. Um, but it's actually, th- this story in the Bible is actually one of the most tragic stories in the entire Bible. Um, you, know, you know that saying, you know, the, there's, there's some elephants in the room? You know that saying? Um, well, there's elephants on the ark, of course, but uh, there's elephants in, in the room uh, when, I guess, uh, for people as we come to the Bible. Uh, things we kind of are aware of but maybe don't want to talk about because uh, they make us uncomfortable. Uh, we're, we're talking about some of those things today. Uh, we are talking about death and judgment, because that's what we see in the story of Noah. Uh, in this story, everybody in the world dies except for eight people on the ark. You know, we don't like talking about death. That's understandable. Uh, death is horrible. It breaks relationships. It's sad. Uh, it's, it's not a good thing. It's not a natural thing. Uh, it is God's judgment upon our sin. That's why death is in the world. And that's the other elephant in the room uh, when it comes to this story, and that is God's judgment. We don't like to talk about the flood as God's judgment. Uh, We don't like the idea of an angry God who judges, a God who would condemn people to hell for their sin. These are hard things to talk about. They're not cheery topics, but they're not topics that we can ignore as God's people. Because we all ourselves will face death and judgment and stand before God. And everybody that we know, our whole world, is facing that same judgment. And most of them are not ready for it. So these are things we must talk about as we come to them in the Word of God. And we're picking up uh, where we left off a few weeks ago in Genesis, uh, the book of beginnings. So just to remind us, where have we come so far? We've seen, first of all, God... Uh, In Genesis, who is he? He's the creator. He's the sustainer of all things. He's the ruler. Uh, And we've seen people, people made in his image, male and female, in relationship with one another and with God. And we saw in the beginning, everything was good. Everything was good. Uh, But of course, the world today is not like the world then. The world is not good. And that is because sin came into the world. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Uh, Sin came in and ruined everything that was good. And along with sin came the just judgment of God upon humanity. That is our death. But at the same time, we've seen this pattern kind of emerging through Genesis, uh, a pattern of sin and judgment and grace. You remember that pattern? If you nod, that tells me that you remember it. That is great and that is so helpful. Sin and judgment and grace. Right? Sin brings God's judgment. That is what we deserve. Uh, but thankfully, these, this is not God's final word over his creation. Uh, God does not treat us as our sins deserve, but he shows us grace. And so there is hope because of God's grace. 
And we see that again today in the story of Noah. We see that sin, we see the judgment, but we see the grace of God. So let's walk through and we'll see those things. So we'll pick it up in Genesis 6, 9. You've got your Bibles. Genesis chapter 6 is where we're going to start. Verse 9. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. So straight up we meet Noah, and this is what the author wants us to know. Noah was righteous. Okay, not righteous in the sense that he was morally perfect and never did anything wrong, uh, but he was someone who stood out in his generation. You can see it there. He was someone who was blameless among the people of his time, right? Because he was someone who walked faithfully with God. That, that is why he was righteous. Right? And you can see the comparison with the rest of the world as we go on in verse 11. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. So this is the situation of the world at this time. It is corrupt or it is ruined. You think about that word ruins. You think about like a city that is just rubble where previously it used to be just a beautiful city but now it lies in ruins. And that is what creation is like. God created it good and beautiful and now it lies in ruins because of human sin. Right, sin, as we said, came in through Adam, was passed on to his sons, Cain and Abel, and through them was passed on to the rest of humanity. So now the earth is full of violence at this time, which means it's full of sinners uh, with sinful behaviour. And, and, and how sinful is man? Well, not, not just a bit sinful, but thoroughly infected. We see that in verse 5. We're jumping back here, uh, Genesis 6, 5. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. All right, how sinful are we? Right, that is a cup that is overflowing with sinfulness. You look at that. Every inclination of the heart, only evil all the time. Uh, that is the state of humanity lost in sin. And then we see sin brings the judgment of God. So we see that in verse 13. Uh, so God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Right. So here, God brings judgment. And we see through the text, we see that this judgment is just. It reminds us why this is a just judgment upon humanity. So have a look at verse 7. Uh, it says here, So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created. And so we remember that God is the creator of all things and all people. And he has the right to judge them this way when they do wrong. And the next one, uh, Genesis six seventeen. Uh, it says there, I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens every creature that has the breath of life in it. All right, so reminded, when God created Adam, he breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. It is God who gives us life and breath and everything. And so when his creation rebels against him, he is just to bring a judgment upon them. Right, God has done nothing wrong when he judges human sin. This, you know, it's exactly what we deserve. But, but thankfully, sin and judgment are not the last word. But we see the grace of God toward Noah. We see God's grace in this story. And so what does God do to Noah? Well, he, he speaks to him. He lets him in on his plans. He says, I'm going to flood the world. Build an ark. Here's how you build it. Here's who you take with you. Gives him the instructions. Uh, and then even at the last moment, when, when the flood waters are coming upon the earth and the ark is built and Noah's there, we have this wonderful little detail that shows us the grace of God. Uh, Genesis seven sixteen up on the screen. It says, Then the Lord shut him in. Right, it's as if God has, has reached down with his own hand uh, to, to close the door, to shut him in, to seal him in, to, to make him safe, saying, you are going to pass through this judgment and come out on the other side. The Lord does that by his grace. I love that detail. And then, of course, the flood comes, uh, Genesis 7.21. 
and every living thing that moved on the land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth and all mankind, they all perished. But of course, Noah and the ark were safe. And they came through the flood uh, and then we see after the flood, it's, it's a bit of a new beginning in the book of beginnings. Um, Noah and his family are, are, the, are the, the people on earth and God commands them like he commanded Adam and Eve. He says, be fruitful, multiply. Right? So that remains, that's going to happen. Uh, we see Noah making a sacrifice to God like Abel made a sacrifice that was pleasing to God. So that's a good thing. And we see God make this wonderful promise that he's never going to flood the earth again. Well, that's the rainbow. You know the rainbow in the sky? God says, I'm going to put that sign in the sky. I will never flood the earth again. And God says this, even though sin remains in humanity. That's a detail that, that might sort of surprise us a bit as we come to this part of the story. Um, even though the, the, the flood was this judgment upon human sin, it didn't wash away sin completely. Right? Sin was actually carried through the ark in the hearts of the people. And so we see later on when uh, we see Noah falling into sin uh, himself, and, and of course that's going to be passed on to all his children and generations, and so the earth once again will be corrupt and full of violence. But even in the midst of that, uh, God's grace remains. He promises, I'm not going to flood the earth again like I did before. So when you see the rainbow, we might see a rainbow in a few days, maybe a couple of weeks. When you see that rainbow, remember. Remember these things. Remember human sin. Remember God's just judgment upon that sin. But also remember grace. Uh, God's grace remains despite our sin and judgment. When you see that rainbow. Now, of course, these are not the cheeriest subjects. uh, But we've got to talk about the elephants in the room. Um, because it actually has a lot to teach us about life today. It's a reality check that will get us thinking rightly about how to live life today in the world. Because, look, we live in a similar time to Noah. I don't know if you ever thought about that. Uh, We live in a world full of sin, facing the judgment of God, and most people we live with are not ready for that. Jesus uh, said it this way in Luke. Now Jesus said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. See, we live in a world that doesn't realise we are on the brink of judgement. And for most people, that is going to come unexpectedly, just like the flood did in Noah's time. Right, this is what's going to happen in the future. Uh, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but Jesus is going to return. Uh, he is the Lord, but he'll return as judge as well. Right, and as incredible as it may seem to us, every single person who has ever lived will be raised and stand before him and give an account of their life. That's the judgment day. Right, and who can stand on this day? Right? God, God is, is righteous. He has righteous anger against our sin. Uh, God's anger is not like ours. Uh, It flares up in a moment. Uh, It's emotional. It's irrational. Uh, God's anger is not like that. Uh, It is settled. It is reasoned. It is just. And God judges perfectly. And look, you know, it's funny. We are a people who love justice. Uh, I'll tell you how I know. When someone is tailgating me in my car and they're annoying me and then we get to two lanes and they take off, and I see the undercover cop car turn his lights on and follow them, justice, okay? I'm, I'm excited for that justice. And I drive past feeling very good. Um, we like justice. We don't like it when we're the person being pulled over, though. We don't like it when the justice is coming upon us. We'll give all the reasons and excuses in the world to avoid that. All right, here's the truth. Our sins deserve the punishment of God The punishment is death, not just physical, spiritual and eternal. Conscious torments of hell is a just punishment for sinners who rebel against God. As hard as that might be to believe for for many of us, that's a just punishment for sinners. 
right? Hard things to talk about, but the reason that we talk about sin and judgment is so that we can lay a groundwork for the grace of God. Okay, you guys know two ways to live? Please tell me you know two ways to live. You've got to, you got to, come on. Uh, two ways to live does this. Uh, it, it, the first three boxes, there's six boxes. The first three boxes lay this groundwork for the grace of God. Right, stuff we've been talking about. Box one there on the left uh, is God created all things. Okay? Box two, uh, we reject God uh, and you know, ruin, run life our own way without him, ruin the world and all things. Box three is God's justice. We deserve death and judgment. But God's grace comes next. You're not going to see it up there. Sorry, it's not going to be up there. But, but God's grace comes next. God does not teach God does not treat us as our sins deserve, but he sent his son to save us. So think about about the the cross of Christ, Jesus dying in our place. This is what it means. Jesus suffered for us. He suffered the punishment that we deserved. He endured the wrath and the anger of God that was against our sin. He died our death. And he completely satisfied the justice of God. And Jesus, he did it. He rose again. Uh, He is ruler, he is judge, he is saviour of all people. That is the good news and that is the grace of God. You know, so now just like the ark was the only way of salvation through the judgment in Noah's time, Jesus is the only way of salvation through our time. Like those who believe in Christ... Uh, they are safe in him. Right? God will shut us in with Christ and we will pass through judgment, pass through death and judgment and be safe with him eternally. That is, that is the grace of God to us in Jesus Christ. And so as we think about these things, how should, you know, what we've read about in Genesis, knowing the grace of God, how should it transform the way we live life now in this time before the coming judgment of God? Now, well, firstly, I think one of the things that Genesis points us toward and the New Testament points us toward uh, is to be like Noah. Uh, it really does. It, it, you, know, you know the WWJD? We should get the WWND going, okay? The wristband. What would Noah do? Um, you know, and, and, and what I mean by that is the best thing that Noah did, the thing that he is commended for, is that he believed the word of God. Right? God said something to him and Noah believed it. We see that refrain in, in Genesis. Noah did as the Lord commanded. And see, this is not some kind of salvation by works that Noah has. Right? Noah was saved the same way that any person is saved ever. That is by grace, through faith, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Noah is commended for his faith. Uh, Hebrews uh, points us in that direction. Hebrews 11.7 talks about Noah. Uh, it says there that by faith, Noah when warned about the things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. So Noah was saved by faith. Noah heard the word of God, believed and was saved. And, and, And we ought to be like Noah, but we hear the word of God to us in the Lord Jesus Christ to come to him and be saved. We believe that. We will not perish, but have eternal life. But also we see, you know, Noah's faith or his belief also led him to do good works, led him to do things uh, when he believed. Right, so Peter actually calls Noah a preacher of righteousness in in his letter, in 2 Peter. Now, we don't have any of Noah's sermons, like we don't have anything that he said, but we see what he did. Right, and his actions spoke really loudly of his faith. Right, what did Noah do? He built an ark in the desert. Okay, I'm sure people thought he was crazy. I'm sure they might have laughed. But that didn't stop him from doing what he was going to do. Right, because he believed the word of God. Uh, Noah ordered his life according to the word of God and the coming judgment. No matter what people thought about him or what people said. And that translates to our time right now, doesn't it? So simply, as Christians, right, our lives should look a little bit crazy in this world. They should should not make sense to people 
that do not know the things that we know. Or you think about what people might think about Christians. They might think, you know, why, why are they giving money to the church or to the mission when they could have saved that and had a nice holiday or something? Why is that person volunteering their time on a Sunday of all days uh, and, and for free? Why do they give themselves so much? Why, why is that person moving house? They've got a beautiful house. They're going to a poor area. Why are they doing that? Why is, why is that person giving up their career, high-paying career to go to Bible college? Right? Why is that person leaving their home and their family to go overseas to teach the gospel over there? Right? The lives that Christians live should look a little bit crazy in the world. They shouldn't make sense to people that don't know the things that we know. Right? Because we are people who believe the promise of God to us in Jesus Christ. Uh, we are people who are ordering our lives in light of that coming judgment, ready and serving for that day. And now, you know, like I said, we don't have Noah's sermons and things that he said, but look, I'm sure he would not have kept quiet. Right? Someone who knew the things that Noah knew, someone who, who had the heart like Noah would have had to walk faithfully with God, uh, he couldn't have kept quiet while everyone around him was headed for destruction. And what about us in this time? As those people who know the judgment of God, but also the grace of God, well, are we concerned for people who don't know that and people who are perishing? Right? Do we, are we moved to tell others so they might be saved? You see, th this time that we live in now, there's a delay between the cross and the judgment. Uh, it's a purposeful delay so this can happen, so people can be saved. Have a look what Peter says in 2 Peter 3, 9. Uh, Peter said there, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, and that is the promise to judge the world, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone come to repentance. All right, so we live in this time of God's patience. Uh, it's kind of like a, like a time of amnesty, you know, when people have been rebelling against the king, and the king says, look, any rebel that lays down their arms and comes back uh, I will pardon them. I will forgive them all their sins uh, and they can be right with me. Okay, that is the time that we live in. The time of God's patience is where people can repent of their sin and come to King Jesus and he pardons all their sin because he died for those sins. What a, what a wonderful thing God is doing. What wonderful grace. Right, praise God for this time of his patience. Praise God for the millions who have believed because they've had time to repent and be saved. You are one of those people, if you believe. Right? Praise God for that. Right? But this time is not going to last forever. Right? The day of salvation comes closer every single day. And so how should that reality transform us? Uh, well, I love, I love the way that Rico Tice puts it. Rico Tice is the guy that uh, wrote Christianity Explorer. He's an English guy. Uh, I really enjoy just the simplicity uh, as he puts things together. So Rico Tice said this. He said, People without Christ go to hell. If I believe that and I love people, why can I not warn them? And I've found the logic of that has never left me. And, and I think that is the simple logic that transforms that. You know, I put it this way. You know, life is short. After death comes judgment and people without Christ to go to hell. Right? This is the time of God's patience. And so loving people in this time is going to mean warning them. Now that doesn't mean you know, we run out in the streets and just start shouting at people uh, to, to repent. Or the, the kind of the turn or burn kind of uh, things you might have heard. Right? But we're going to be doing that together. Uh, we are going to be trying to reach people with the gospel as his people, individually, yes, but together as the church as well, doing all we can to see that happen. Right? There's going to be an urgency, there's going to be a compassion that surrounds that, that just urges us along to keep doing that in whatever way we can as the body of Christ. Right, so these are not easy topics to talk about, um, but this is a reality that we just cannot ignore. Right? For our own sakes, because we are those who are facing death and judgment 
And we want to be those who are found safe in the Lord Jesus Christ, righteous in him through faith. And we can be. But it's also for the sake of those who are not ready, those who are around us. Right? We really want them yeah, to know about sin, to know about judgment, but above all things, to know about the grace of God in the Lord Jesus Christ that saves them. Right? Come and receive forgiveness. Let's pray for those things. Uh, and let's pray we'll be transformed by this word. Would you join me? Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you do not shy away from uh, teaching us the truth. Uh, and Lord, it is before you that we realise our sin, uh, we realise your right to judge, but we also see your wonderful grace in Jesus Christ who died for us. Lord, we thank you for that. Father, we pray that you would give us a growing compassion for those in our world who do not know you, or that you would lead us to do everything we can to bring them the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel. Lord, equip us to do that together. Give us your strength and your words and your power and your wisdom that we might do that and we might see many more come into your kingdom with great joy for eternity. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, we are going to sing again, so I'll invite up the music team. Thanks, guys. Let's sing Judge of the Secrets as we reflect on what we've heard. Judge, 
Here is my heart, what can I say to you? I will not run, I will not hide, I know I'm safe with you. Please take a seat. We're going to pray and we're going to begin our time of prayer with a prayer of confession. Uh, as we come to do this, I will read to us from 1 John. Uh, John tells us, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So the Bible tells us not to hide our sins from God, but to confess it uh, with a repentant heart. Uh, and we ought to do that you know, at all times, personally, in our own prayers, but also when we come together as God's people uh, to confess our sins uh, before God uh, as his people. And so we approach the throne of God knowing our sin, but also knowing his grace. Uh, so we can come with confidence in his forgiveness through Christ. So let's join together in this prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have gone our own way, not loving you as we ought, nor loving our neighbour as ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We deserve your condemnation. Father, forgive us, help us to love you and our neighbour, and to live for your honour and glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to continue leading us in prayer. I'm going to be praying for, uh, it's the beginning of NADOC week, so we're praying for our First Nations people. Also we're praying for our church, uh, as we want to welcome and integrate people uh, into uh, God's people. And we're praying for Bryce and Colleen Mackay, our uh, link missionaries in Japan. And finally, just a prayer for a our youth minister staffing that we keep praying for. So would you join me in prayer? Our Lord and loving Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are the creator of all that is. We acknowledge that in your providence you gave custodianship of the land upon which we meet to the Baramatical people of the Darug Nation. We acknowledge with sorrow the painful history between the Aboriginal people and the later settlers of this land. And we pray that you may work among us the reconciliation that is the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And dear Father, we thank you for gathering us by your grace uh, with you and with one another. And we thank you for the opportunities that we have to encourage and love one another as your church. Father, we pray that you would help us to continually seek to express the unity that we share in church life and that together we might share the grace and privilege of your glory with others. So that we pray that as people come along, that we might be welcoming, that we might be able to share the gospel, uh, that they might believe, Lord, and that we might be able to help them grow along with us uh, in the knowledge of your grace. And Father, we look forward to this and we long for it and pray for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for the Mackays and their work with Omnivision in Japan. We pray for Bryce and Colleen, as well as Matthew and Elliot. And Father, we thank you for the, the support and the continued support uh, that people have been giving to them and this church as well, uh, both that financial and that prayer support uh, that has enabled them to keep working with OM in the Christian Academy in Japan. And Father, we thank you for answering our prayer that Bryce and Colleen have been able to renew their visas and extend their stay for three more years. Uh, we also think of the Lovells and their issues with passports at the moment as well and pray, Father, that you would see to it that Isaac's passport might come through soon. And for the Mackays, Lord, we pray for a safe trip home to Australia. We pray that you would bless them with rest and refreshment as they see family and friends. Uh, Lord, so they might be renewed in their service of you uh, when they return to Japan. We continue to pray for their struggles with health, uh, for Bryce's back. Lord, we pray you would lead him to a place of healing 
and give wisdom to doctors that they might provide effective treatment. We also pray for Colleen and her continuing um, strength. Lord, we thank you that she is stable in herself. And Father, we pray you would keep her muscles pain-free and continue to grow her stronger every day. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to serve students here at this church uh, in years 6 to 12. Father, we thank you for those leaders that we have already and for the students that are here. And we pray that you would establish them and grow them as disciples of Christ, that they might uh, be prepared for a lifetime of trusting him. But Father, we pray you would give us Christ's wisdom as we seek to meet our current need for a new youth minister. We ask that you would give us that person, uh, that person that we need to continue to grow this crucial ministry. We also pray you would give us humble dependence upon you and in your good timing. And Lord, help us to keep persevering in prayer. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, it's still me. Um, that's all right. I've just got a few notices for us. Did I leave something there? No, I didn't. There it is. So the first one to let you know about is this is something new. So Josh Cunningham is currently doing Year 13, uh, which is a, a youth works program, like a gap year program for, you know, Year 13 people. Uh, and he's loving it. He's learning about New Testament, Old Testament, ministry and mission with a, a group of people his age. Uh, he's really enjoying it. But part of what he does in Year 13 is they go to Fiji for a mission trip for three weeks. And so part of learning to do ministry is to raise your own support, raise your own funds. And so Josh has to raise $3,500 to get him uh, to Fiji to go on that mission. And so the way he's going to do it is with a Fiji fundraiser trivia night. So we'd love you to be a part of that, to come along. It's on the 30th of July, 6.30 to 9.30. That's a Saturday. And you come along to that, you enjoy a night of you know trivia, mostly on Fiji and things like that. Uh, you hear a bit more about what Josh is doing, uh, but you can also, and the main reason is, you can support him financially and with your prayers as you come along to that night. So love to have you there. Uh, it's on the 30th of July, as I said. If you can't go, don't want to go, just any reason not going to be there, you can still support Josh. Uh, you can give toward his mission trip, uh, and we'll be giving more details about how to do that, probably just through the website with a donation, you know, Fiji trip. So if you'd like more info on that or like to give toward it, you can come and talk to me. But there'll be more info coming over the next few weeks. Uh, and last thing I'll say is, uh, just following up from our chat with Peter about serving, uh, the way that you can sort of take next steps or think about that is firstly, grab the serving booklet. There's some in the foyer if you want to think about it. Great book. Talks about why we serve, ways we can serve, uh, and just how it, you know, ultimately, it's how God grows his kingdom uh, and how he builds his church. And so, that's why we want to be serving. As Peter said, that's a great thing to help you think about it. Uh, and then when you're ready to do something or you want to have a conversation with me or someone else, you can use that uh, Next Steps QR code. There's some at the back. There's also paper copies there. Uh, and you can just let us know, I'd like to serve in this way or I'd like to talk about serving. And you can take next steps in that. Uh, there's always a need for people to do stuff on Sundays and during the week uh, in other ways. So uh, keep thinking and praying about those things. Thanks. We're going to sing one more time. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Lachlan. Let's stand. I will glory in my Redeemer whose priceless blood has ransomed me. Mine was the sin that drove the bitter nails and hung him on that judgment tree. I will glory in my Redeemer who crushed the power of sin and death. My only Savior judge the lamb who is my righteousness the lamb who is my righteousness I will glory in my redeemer my life 
have he bought my love he owns I have no longings for another I'm satisfied in him alone I will glory in my redeemer his faithfulness my standing place though foes of mighty upon me my feet are firm held by his grace my feet are firm held by his grace I will glory in my redeemer who carries me on eagle's wings crowns my life with loving kindness his triumph song I'll ever sing I will glory in my redeemer who waits for me at gates of gold and when he calls me it will be paradise his face for continue our time together over morning tea. Let me pray. Lord God, we rejoice in your greatness and power, your patience and love, your mercy and justice. Enable us by your spirit to honour you in our thoughts, words and actions, and to serve you in every aspect of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, please hang around and join with us in morning tea, a time of fellowship and encouraging one another in growing in God's word and relationship. And we're going to be having morning tea inside, so just bear with us while we move a few of the chairs back and serve from the back window. Thank you. Thank you.